knew I was going to do it. Brent, I'm actually trying my best to always, each and every week, to step our game up from a production level. Right. So saying that, for a long time, because when I started with Ecamm, I only used the one screen, and it was very hard to use both streams. So using a program screen and a uh, preview screen, it was just hard. Now, And, of course, you and I both know the professional way of doing this is having a preview and a program screen, right? Yes. Well, because, you know, I'm here with this. I just got used to doing it one way. So I'm forcing myself today to use the preview and the program screen. And I almost forgot, like, I'm having to move some things around. But we made it work. Like, we're here today. Um, Welcome to another stream show, Brent. I, I'm telling you, I did, I did technical production and TV broadcast for many, many years. And all I did was complain that Ecamm didn't have preview program. When they did have preview program, I don't use it either because I would forget. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm thinking I'm switching and people are texting me like, you're still on you. Like there's a whole video I did at work of me like I'm texting and I'm just chilling and I'm like, oh, I forgot to hit it. But if you have the stream deck, you can, um, that is built in there. So if you are new to Ecamm and you can use the preview program mode, and if you don't understand what that is, you can actually preview what you're doing. You can change the graphics you can change the shot before anybody else sees what's going on and then you can hit uh you know publish that go to live i would suggest everybody start that way because you don't want to be that's the professional way to do it that's the right way to do it so. it is definitely the right way to do it and also the right way to do it is uh <laughs> when you start with something it's just hard to figure it out so that being said i do want to say hello uh, yes, the stream guys are here. Kathy, thank you so very much for chiming in. And then we have another person on Facebook, and I don't know what we're going to do to get the Facebook user icon on here. We're going to figure this out. But Facebook users, hello, fellas. I'm going to go and actually look at I can go Jillian, to Facebook. And, you know, so, uh, so Jillian? Yeah, thank you so very much for hanging out with us. Miss Jill and Jillian, she, uh, congratulations. She just went over 30,000, I think. 30,000? Ridiculous, right? Subs? I think that's right. Jillian, there you go. Yeah. Uh, she just shared that. So she's been working hard. So good to everybody out there. Hey, and, let's and talk about what, working. Listen, guess what I'm doing, right? You got what are you doing? You got to publish that. Like once I put it on the screen, I can look at it. <laughs> you got to publish it. You got to publish, publish it. it. Let's talk about publish. shorts. Have you been messing with shorts? Anything? Let's not talk about shorts. Like why we want to talk oh, about shorts, man. Brand? Huh? All right. So we're in a little bit of a, you know, we're really trying to, to push the stream show we got to get to that next level we want to get to that uh, partnership program so please subscribe hit the subscribe button if you can get all your friends to subscribe if you have multiple accounts subscribe um so i've been doing some shorts and i've had some really good success in uh i'm no, no, no. averaging don't say about you've two. been doing some shorts don't say that don't say i've been that. doing like two thousand views per short i think strick's oh. done a couple he's like five or six i mean come on welcome to the uh stream chris Thank you for hanging out with us today. Uh, he says, "What's good, gentlemen?" He's looking forward to Doctor Weaver tonight. Definitely, I'm gonna have to go to, there's looking. a lot Thank of Facebook people hanging out with us. So that's actually he's on he's on our uh, YouTube channel. Okay, well I'm seeing some other. I'm just logging in. We got Julian. We got Dana Lattery, and um, I'll have to What's keep an good, eye on uh, that. So, Jer uh, Jerry's in. So hanging out with us tonight. Shouts out to you, sir. There we go. Facebook user. All right. Dana, <laughs> shouts out to you, sir. I'm trying to keep up one. with everybody. Yeah, we're going to get everybody in here tonight. It's, it's a good night. Everybody wants to hear about this topic, right? Don't forget to hit publish. Yeah, exactly. So I was there talking and not pulling this up. And for whatever reason, when I'm publishing this, uh, it's only staying up for a second. You see hmm. that? Yeah. That's weird. Ooh. You might have to come out of the publish mode. You might have to just do it the way you normally do it. You know, I, I'm we trying do so see. very much to figure it out. I'm going to go in and see if I can keep this going for 15 seconds. Maybe the overlays after 15 seconds automatically hide after 15 seconds. That's there. Oh, I see Dana Lattery is in here. He's the fly fishing Bow River outfitter. So I did watch right. some of his videos. That's some awesome stuff. So That's I'm going cool. to wanna be a fly fisherman. I used to fly fish back in the day. Yeah. But, uh, I, I just, love it. I fish it. Publish. Here we go. 
There it is. Whoa, it didn't go. Because <laughs> you didn't hit publish? I, why would I have to pick? No, I don't publish? know. No, it should auto switch. Wow. Well, there you go. Let's so, lo- <laughs> roll that open. I'm, I'm just going to have to just open the overlay window. There you no, go. No, no, no. It's screens. <laughs> scenes. Scenes. Scenes? Shots. My shots seem to be wide when I... So we've tried it, Brant, and there's some hiccups to even some of our scenes going to the next scene. I'm sure it's operator error. No, it could, it, you know, one of the things you have to realize is, you know, I've, I've said this a million times. Um, I, I will live on this, pro, you know, when you've been doing this long enough, this thing that separates the amateurs from the professionals is how the professionals handle the problems. It's, it, you're going to always have problems. And it's um, Murphy's Law. You know, I've, I've worked in uh, live TV forever where, I went in two hours early. I got my crew. We walked through it. We did everything. I checked all the audio. I checked all the video. I checked all the cables. I reran everything. We did three or four run throughs. You go live and then something tanks. It never fails. It'll always happen when you go live. It's how you handle that problem and knowing how to backtrack through your, you know, your mental list. And there's no checklist. There's no nothing that can help you at that point. You just got to go in your mind. You just got to go. All right, I did this, did this, 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 and you figure out, you know, live without losing your composure. So, um, and it's it's not the end of the world. It's, it's live; not. everybody understands. So, you know, my background changes. Miss Jill mm-hmm. wants to know about my background changes. So, um, I actually did a couple of things. I had some little bitty Amazon lights that were the color lights. I didn't; they didn't put out enough uh, wattage. And then um, I painted the back brick wall. It was white. I painted it. I painted it a dark gray. And then I have some GVM lights. Um, you can see it's right behind my chair. If I move, there we go. So it's uh, shining on the background. I forgot to turn on the Mac, the G4 or the G3 uh, Snowball Bank back there. I should have turned it on because it, you know, I can put some animations in there. But that way I can just change scenes by changing the light. I'm getting ready to launch. I did my first show for my beer show last night, Beer Utopia. I changed the background colors between shows. So um, it's just simple, um, and I'm happy with it. And then over here, I guess what really changed is I got a um, um, China ball light. So I have this you know, real soft light right in front of my face and turned off all the lights so that makes everything you know darker in the background. Maybe I should have went with one of those, um, the the more of a cone kind of light that everybody uses with the big um, shade around it. Um, but I really like the China ball, so that's what we got. Brent, you look good, sir. Oh, Brent and I also us. ran a 200-foot Ethernet cable to the stream shed so I'd have a better feed tonight. So hopefully and I that thank will... Thank you so very much for, do, <laughs> for doing that. We're actually, I haven't buried it yet. So hey, we're actually that. streaming in 2K. There we go. That's what's up. I have 200 down and like 16 up, so it should be fine now. Um, I just got to, you know, that's one problem with Strick being in Alabama. If he was here, I'd be just like, Strick, come over. Help me dig a ditch so we can bury this. Right, I need right, some help. Right. But um, I'll have to do that maybe next weekend. That being said, we have some Major League help tonight for our audience. You know, Brandon and I, the stream guys, are here to help streamers succeed. And one of the ways that you can succeed in doing content creation is actually monetizing your work. Like, who wants to continue to do this and have the motive to do it week in, week out, day in and day out, and not get something out of it? Not be able to say, hey... You know, not only do I enjoy this, but others enjoy it and brands are paying me to do it. Thank goodness we have great partners. Strict. Like, yes. Hit pre hit hit publish. 
Well, well, I got them on the screen right now. I hit publish, and there's <laughs> Monty Weaver. I'm talking while you're sitting there, and I forgot to turn back all around because I'm looking at the whole <laughs> nine. I'm introducing Monty. Monty is here today. He is uh, one of the leaders in the space of teaching people how to get brand and sponsorship deals. And, uh, man, we we're, I have been in Clubhouse with him. Uh, where he's been teaching some of these things. He's has his own group, his own community where he's teaching this. And I am like at all at all that he has done in this space. So when we got started, Brent, when I got started, so I needed, my church needed to stream, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, if you know Monty Weaver, like one of the first videos that he had to really blow up, one of the first was teaching people how to go live, churches how to go live, uh, with live video content. Mm -hmm. And I've watched so many other videos and I'm so thankful for how he's able to teach on YouTube because it's not easy to teach on YouTube for people to actually get it. But I was really intrigued by how he taught it. Watch the videos, watch the videos, watch the videos. Guess what? Now I'm an expert as well. So thank you so very much, Monty, for all that you've done for the community. And thank you for your time tonight, for coming on and hanging out with us. Oh, no problem, man. I'm glad those videos actually paid off. Somebody they did actually pay got off. Some, I, something listen, from them. <laughs> I did. I did. I got something from them. So thank you for, so very much for doing it. Oh, no problem. You, you, like you said, it's one of the things when you, when you do a video, especially for YouTube, it's like you have to create it in a way where the viewer understands the video. Um, and that's, you know, it's a little, it's a challenge if you've never done it that way. Uh, but one of the things I do get the privilege of doing is teaching a lot of non-techies, so it's easier for me to speak that language, so making that video wasn't as difficult. But there's some other videos that I'm like, oh, this, this is going to take some work for the novice to understand this. How can I make it simple for them? Well, that makes sense. Um, can you kind of go through the progression, Monty, of, of course, where I found you? Uh, teaching churches because you have that background and experience. Can you kind of go through your uh, online content creator journey? Because where you are now is definitely not where you started. I think you started actually doing real estate, like teaching real estate. Yeah, so I, so before even the real estate, I was on a platform called Blab and it was like four people in a window and you could go live and talk to each other. And then as that platform kind of went away, I jumped over and migrated to Periscope. And it was really because a buddy of mine kind of pushed me to get on the platform because I was showing him different things about tech. And I was like, why doesn't people, why don't people just go live from their desktop? Everybody's just going live from their phone. Go live from your desktop. This is easier. You could show screen shares and all kinds of stuff. And he was like, Monty, people don't know how to do that. So why don't you get on Periscope and teach them how to do that? And I had no reason to jump on like there, I wasn't monetizing and I wasn't thinking about content creation I wasn't thinking about a business nothing he pushed me to get on Periscope so I started teaching people tech stuff on Periscope and I'm like this is pretty cool and then I had um, got an invitation to teach at local real estate companies for lunch and learn so I was teaching them digital strategies Facebook ads and all kinds of stuff that um, were relevant to them so when I started to put content on YouTube, a lot of it was geared toward the real estate professionals because I was providing service service for them as well. So it was kind of a, like a lead attraction uh, platform for me. And then I kind of, you know, wanted to put some content out more about live streaming because I was I was really pressed about showing some of the churches how to do it because they kept asking the same questions. Right. And the timing of when that happened and when the video release and the world shut down, it was almost like this perfect storm where everybody gravitated to that video. Thank you again for watching the video. Yes, sir. And um, that's kind of how it spawned into like a content creation type of thing. Uh, Cause I, I spent a lot of time on YouTube uh, or a lot of time on Facebook and Periscope from 2016 to 2020. But in 2020, that was kind of like that, that moment if I had one. Well, that definitely makes sense to me. And I can appreciate where you are now and what you're doing. So again, thank you so very much. And how did you decide in all of that, you know what, I wanna do this in a group. I need to have my own course. I need to have a community based around what I'm doing right now. Cause I wanna be sure as we have, as we have you here tonight, that people know that not only will you give us great information, but they can get this on a constant basis from you as well. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I had put together groups before to teach people how to do the tech thing, how to set up your cameras, how to use two webcams back in the day before we had all these mirrorless cameras. We would do two cameras in OBS and go live. Like I was showing people how to do all of this and I would have these groups and uh, it wasn't really getting exposed to the world because I think I was just on the wrong platform, quite honestly. I was on Facebook and right. people couldn't search for me. They, they didn't know they needed me, right? They don't know they need us until they start typing in something. Oh, that, that person knows the answer to my question. So when I started putting the content out there, I was doing the exact same thing. I was starting to work with these companies. They would reach out, they would see my content. And I started a, a group and I was really just teaching them. And then as it was kind of growing, the group wasn't necessarily growing, but the content was growing gotcha. and things were happening. And I said, you know what? I don't want to really grow this group because I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. Like, I see you guys are having success. I'm having some success over here. Let me just share it with you all. And I began to like really see this, these brands and sponsorship opportunities just opening up. And I was like, hold let's kind of keep this in the circle real quick and just see what we can do with here. Cause I'm learning it. I'm going right. through it like a step before them. So it wasn't something I was just going to say, Hey, everybody come over here and do this thing. But as it, it became something that was like really growing, it really allowed me to say, okay, this is something that we can expand on now and like kind of teach because we've gone through so many different ways of how this works, what does work, what doesn't work, what to look out for. Um, and it, it's been a, it's been a wild ride the last year, man. It's been awesome. It's been great for me to hear and see the work that you've been putting in. I feel like uh, you're one of the forerunners in, in doing this. Like you were, timing is important. I've heard some people use, Brent, I heard them use uh, content creation, especially on YouTube, like catching a wave. And mm -hmm. the pandemic wave went through and your content was right on time to hit the wave and it kind of pushed you forward to uh, to where you are now. And you just kind of taking the bull by the horn and started riding with it and coming up with new concepts. And even in the midst of, uh, again, congratulations to you on, on your, uh, your family changing and all that other kind of stuff, yeah. man, that's been awesome for you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a lot at one time. And, and, you know, sometimes people get overwhelmed by that, but that's not me. Like, I really love what I do. So I kind of just embraced all of it um, as it was happening. Yes. Yeah, so baby girl, she's here. So I'm loving being new dad mode and starting a new community for a different type of audience. That's been pretty amazing because, you know, people are loving, you know, that concept and kind of seeing what's there for them. And, you know, being able to work with like dream companies I would have never thought of that's been cool because I That's didn't like, great. you know, set out to like, I got to work with this company and they started to come into me. So it's been a whole bunch of good things just happening together. So, um, I, I thank you guys for like having me here on the show to, to, you know, share my knowledge and, and what I've learned and how we can help some other people tap into, uh, this creator economy. Well, we're excited so, about it. Brent, I know we got people in the comments. You, can you mm -hmm. go down that just for a little bit for us? Oh, we have a ton of people over here. So we have, um, let's see, Chris Stone. He said, that's my dude. Bring it, Monty. Um, of course, uh, James Hicks, Mr. Weaver is in the building. Um, I was answering some questions. Um, somebody had a question about how tight in were zoomed. I tried to answer that for you. We can come back to that later. And I'm trying to see the Facebook users. We've got Lyle Weber. He said, Monty, if my channel is a Christian finance-based channel, how does one go about getting sponsorships for streams? From what I've seen in that space, people generally want to sponsor more mainstream content in that niche. So we're jumping right on into it. <laughs> good question though. Yeah. yeah. That's a good so, question. Yeah. So for context, for the, those that don't know me, I'm a very simple person. I, I look at things very simply and then I execute on simple. So for any answer I give, I won't put that context around it. You just have to create the content for the brands that they would like, regardless of position, regardless of industry. If the brand likes the message and it connects with their audience, that's the deal. What I've learned is you have to learn how to speak the language of the brand because you can repackage the offer. I've literally worked with companies that were like, no, at first. And I re I basically restated in another way, the offer. And then they accepted it. It's the exact same thing, different language. It's almost like 
you know, if I'm speaking in English and someone is speaking in Spanish, we can say the same sentence. You just hear it differently because it's two different languages. And when you can learn how to speak the same language, it's a lot easier to get the brands to actually accept an offer or when you pitch an offer, they're more willing to listen to it. So reach out to those companies that are in the finance space in general. And those are the companies that you would really just want to learn what it is that they do, what are their needs, uh, what content are they not creating. I'm not going to go down all the list of all these things. So I just did like a, a 90 minute webinar on Monday. But like there are so many ways that you can see what they need and create content based on that, regardless of industry. And that's what I really like about this new content creator economy, because everybody needs content. Right. Now. Right. That's true. So one of my biggest or here's a question I have for you, and I think this is one of the biggest questions everybody here in this group will have. Um, I've been a marketing director. I've been head of marketing. I've run my own ad agency. So I understand the value of content. The hard part is, is how do you how are you valuing your um, brand deals? Are you uh, you have a number in your head that you just know that you have to meet or are you researching that um niche and you kind of know what the rates are how are you evaluating mm -hmm. everything yeah everything's so new right now with right. brands and sponsors right and i'm blessed to be in a position where i'm attracting them to me so i'm not really looking at numbers at all when i go out to do a deal it's more so the volume of attraction allows me to really negotiate what i want um work with specific brands at this point um specific deliverables at this point and i think a lot of that just has to do with being able to do a, a, a lot of it early on freely like i was creating content on youtube about these brands without thinking i was going to do a brand deal that's how i started in 2020. it was strict so like i was doing how do you live stream for churches like it right. was a video for churches to help people figure out how to live stream and then i was talking about different platforms that would help when I did that, these platforms reached out to me. I had no intention of reaching out to them. I didn't know about brand deals. I thought you had to have 100,000 subscribers. Heck, I thought you had to have 20,000 subscribers, right. 10,000 subscribers. You know, why were these companies reaching out to me? So that's kind of how I, I got started in doing it. So at this point, it's more so, okay, I know I have value in the marketplace and I'm still trying to determine that because brands are that are involved in the creator economy they are more willing to compensate you for what you're worth like i can put out a dollar sign and i'm like okay that i'm happy to do this and then there's others where they say no right off the bat so you have to reposition a little bit and kind of explain to them what all they're really getting you're getting uh you know high-end equipment you're getting a spokesperson you're getting me you're getting lighting you're getting uh all kinds of, you're getting repurposed content for instagram twitter linkedin amazon live so you can package your offering so many different types of ways to really get to that number that I know a lot of us as influencers are looking to get to. You have a lot of, um, I was watching Alicia Way's um, interview the other night with Roberto Blake, and you kind of mimic mm -hmm. a lot of that. What he said is that, you know, uh, and, and I'm like, I come from that world too. And even though I come from that world, I forget to think that, hey, I'm the talent, I'm providing the lighting, I'm providing the video providing the editing if you're charging for all of these things you know even at an hourly rate it'd be way above what you think you're oh, probably yeah. worth right i mean oh, yeah. um to to do a 15 minute video could be thirty thousand dollars you know um and here's one person doing it every day so i want everybody to realize that there are so much value in, in what you do if someone reach out to you it's easy i don't want to say it's 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 we're all trying to make it. So it's easy to say yes to that first deal because you just want to yeah. say I'm making money, but you know, um, stick to your guns. Yeah. Yeah. So what and would you say? Cause I'm thinking about guys, some of the new creators, I, I the first thing somebody wants to do is they want to go live and then they want to get paid to go live. <laughs> Someone is a new content creator. What's the real first step, the first hurdle, Monty, they need to overcome to be in position for a brand or influencer deal? Yeah, they need some audience. You, you don't have to have a large audience, but you need an audience. You need people to show up, listen to what you have to say. Um, it makes it even better if they can take an action based off of that. So whether that's a Facebook group, hey, we're going to all come into this Facebook group and we're going to learn how to 
cook the best pasta. Like it's just a whole Facebook group of pasta makers, right? right? So I didn't go into it and I don't suggest anybody go into it thinking, okay, I need a brand deal. I need to get live, I need to get paid right off the bat. It's going in and creating value. And I know all of us have done that and a lot of the communities we're in, that that's a common the common thought is to create value. And when you create massive amount of value, people will follow you regardless of the platform that you're on. If you create value, people show up, they listen to you, then you can reach out to the brands and then they know, okay, you have some value. What people, people listen to what you have to say. And I really think that platform is important, uh, paying attention to where you're putting that value at. Because like I said at the beginning, I, I taught on Facebook for like four years but nobody saw my content like unless you were a facebook friend of mine you did not see what i was talking about you did not right. see my setup of live streaming four years ago before it became this thing that everybody's like i got overlays well i did that four years ago right and, yeah so you know being on the right platform is a is a major uh thing to consider as well and platforms have gotten better since then where you can build communities or you know have a good true feel of how your audience is responding to you with analytics so that uh, is definitely the data that you want to have ready to go to but if someone's first getting started off you got to put out content you, you have to show up consistently in and, and be of value in the marketplace where people actually want to listen to what you have to say so this is the second time, Brant, that Monty has said build community. You know, we're talking community. about brand deals and influencer deals. So in order for you to get a influencer deal or a sponsorship, guess what? You have to be an influencer, right? You, you have to have some type of influence. And influence is you have the ability to ha cause someone to make a decision. Right. That, that's what it is. Like, so you two are here we have few people watching us live if we talk about anything related to tech tonight i guarantee especially my techies that are watching they are going to go look at that new device right we had influence on that because they would have looked at that device tonight unless we would have told them to and someone might actually make a purchase based off of that right so that is influence and i think a lot of people don't think they can tap into this influencer economy because they think the influence has to be so big so large and that's just not the case if, if people are willing to take that action if that small community takes that same action as a large community you have just as much influence and, and companies take note of that because they don't have anybody in their own company creating influence you know we i know we have so many different companies that of equipment that we use but most of the time we go to youtube when we're looking for the, some, the other person that's already used the equipment that right. that's who we're looking for we're not looking for the right, brand's right. video we're looking hey what what does strict and brand have to say about this microphone do they like it i know the company likes it y'all developed it right. but what do y'all have to say about the microphone that then i'll make a decision based on that right i also think people have to understand that over the years this has all changed it was mm -hmm. um you know when i started in 2006 2007 I had brand deals, but I didn't know what that was called, right? I was from TV. I called it sponsorships, and I kind of hodgepodge my way through that, and you couldn't even make – you weren't even supposed to be making money on YouTube back then. Then it became influencer marketing. Everybody's trying to hire influencers. Now as a content creator, right? So it, it kind of morphs all the time, and one of the things with agencies and marketing people, you have to know the trendy words. So you might be just a video editor, but you're really a content creator, and that's what everybody wants to hear now. So, you know, realizing where the industry is going and how people are um, talking about it in the right uh, keywords and tricky phrases to you in your presentation can really help you a lot. Because, um, you know, if you were to do, you know, three years ago, I would have said, well, I'm a video producer and I edit this content on YouTube. I'm a YouTuber, right? That might not work today. Or if you said content creator, everybody's looking for content creation. So, um, and... The, the number one thing is that you have to have content today to survive and no company has enough people on staff to make content and it's easier to hire it out. So you're basically, you know, you're providing them value because they can just pick up the phone or drop you an email and say, I need a bunch of content. Right. Mm -hmm. So we do have people that's checking in with us. Uh, Living Water mm -hmm. Quilter, she says, good 
evening, folks. And I'm saying these things, Brent, because I'm still having a problem putting them on the screen <laughs> and staying for a while. We're in the Mike, beta, wanna... so that could be at Jarhead Six Rides. I told a company no for Amazon Live. I'm not making money for them for free. I get that. We'll get into that as well. Brian Jones is checking in with us. Greetings all. And we have a Facebook user. We're going to start with this question for you, Monty, as well. How do you attract people to your community? As we're talking about being an influencer, like how do you attract those people? I think you talked about it just a little bit, so we may have to restate it for them. Yeah, um, yeah. I apologize if my answer sounds simple, but it's literally creating the most value. Creating um, value. Yeah, that, yeah. If I can, if I can answer your question in a way that no one else is answering it, if I can give you a deeper insight to cause your understanding to be that much better, you'll come back to me. I, I know you'll come back to me. Strick, you, you said you watched multiple videos. I did. You didn't, watch, you didn't watch multiple videos because the videos were bad. You, you watched the video, and you probably watched that video multiple times because it was a value to you. Right. And so you're gonna come back. And so the more people that you can impact that way is one of the ways that you can grow a community. YouTube, it's like a subscribe button. On Instagram, it's a follow button, right? On Amazon Live, it's a follow button. So people will come back if you provide the most value. And I, I'm, I go by one of those things where I say, give it all away. Now there is a, there is a method to the madness of giving it all away uh, because you do have to monetize at the end of the day too. But I literally give away all my content to the, the person that does not know me. If you don't know me, I'm going to give you all the answers. And what I tell people is if you catch me live, I'm going to give you all the answers. Once I'm not live or once I'm not online, there's a there's a there's a little invoice that comes along with that answer like that. but if like you catch that. it online i will give you the answer like i will not hold anything from you so if you guys have questions tonight i'm gonna give you the answer and it's not sugar-coated either it's that's what it is and like i said i, I a lot of my a lot of my strategy is just so simple <laughs> i love it well we do have it. we have a question for chris stone in here and he said are brands realizing the value of influencers who are more niche without millions of subscribers and reaching out to more nano influencers? Will they be patient enough to see the value? Yeah, that's my guy. Chris is amazing. Shout out to Chris and everything Definitely he's got going on. Chris. Yeah, um, his event coming out here uh, um, with Amazon influencers. Yeah, I think companies are already beginning to realize the value. The more that us as the influencers state the value, if we don't position ourselves in a way that we do carry value in the marketplace, I think they will continue to look the other direction and you know, they'll try to figure out these other marketing avenues and these different channels. But if we as the influencer, we as the, we as the content creator, we as the person that creates an image, we as the person that does a video, like even if you do one video, okay, you're a content creator, you're an influencer. If you do the video, you do the post, you do the tweet, and you understand the value of what that is, we can be compensated at a rate that makes sense. Like I look over my shoulder, y'all see all this stuff over my shoulder? I do. Like that's product placement. Like, but it's it's free product placement. Like nobody's paying me for that stuff right there. Gotcha. So when people say, how do you get a brand deal? Well, I just show people what I use. And guess what? The company's <laughs> like, oh, you use our stuff. Hey, you want some more stuff? Like it's just sitting there. Like I'm not charging nobody for nothing right now. I and like that we're on live stream video. This video will get seen like, Hey company. Yes. Guess what? I showed your stuff on camera. Can we kind of do something together? What do you think? You know, an idea. Oh, I was on another live stream last week and your stuff was sitting there too. Like th these are different things that I think about that aren't hard pitches. There are not hard sales. It's just there. It's, it's part of what I do. So I encourage people to think about what, it, what is your industry? What do you do organically? And how can you just like easily just kind of Put it in your next screenshot like you know i'm drinking water like before the live like i could hide this or i could say hey company hey i show this every single video let's let's do something you know right my wife gets Can all the product placement in my studio so she she's making me do this like this is really her office but it's mine <laughs> <laughs> i give oh, some people that's good stuff Can I give a little bit of extra added value there. What I like to do too is when I post, especially on LinkedIn, because most of the brand managers and people are on LinkedIn, is at those companies. Absolutely. Like when you post your video, like, hey, did this great review with at Sure Microphones about their 
SM7B, hashtag SM7B club, you know, so doing all of that kind of shout out um, is very, very, very helpful. So, very helpful. Um, because they will see it because That's true. And, and as a marketing extra person, effort does that take you? Nothing. I mean, and it just actually, it makes it better, you know, it's, it's a better, um, post, right? It's more informative because your yep. people who are watching it can click on the sure rep to see what the sure microphones are, you know? Yep. And I just think that it's, um, um, going out and just, you know, putting it out there is the best way to do it. Like you said, and you know, hopefully the value will come back to you if you just keep making good content. Mm-hmm. And we have a couple people in the chat. I want to shout out Kurt Nugent for hanging out with us tonight. Monty, I love that. It's one of the comments he's made. So he's hanging out with us. Hello, gentlemen. That's from Phil Hill. He's got a cool name. Thanks, Phil, for hanging out with us tonight. Um, and um, who else do we have? Mr. He, Riley, West yeah, Side. It's, it's the West Side. <laughs> have, have they made it to the set? There he is. There he is. And we Mr. Got- Riley, I, well, I want Mr. Riley to send me some of those Randy Donuts. I'm just if you watch if you follow if you follow him you'll know so if you know you know Randy's donuts just saying so we have um, Danny that's on he says I'm amazed at what you guys are doing from your homes well thank you this is not easy and we work very hard on it uh, Brant didn't allow me to cut corners so that's how we get it done and talk I cut about all the corners low or no about? overhead there is a little bit of overhead to this that's the way to do it so there is a little bit of overhead to this and uh Brent and I both kind of teach streamers how to succeed in this um it doesn't have to be a huge amount of overhead using the right products does really matter and knowing mm-hmm. what you're using i've seen a couple of people do the exercise monty where they'll take a professional photographer with a cheap camera and take a novice with an expensive yep. camera and of course the professional still does a better yep. job with the cheap camera because of course he knows what to do so and yep. uh walter strong is hanging out with us tonight thank you walter good evening gentlemen checking out your stream listen if you haven't already done it whether you are i don't know it looks like he's on linkedin no he's on facebook so facebook people um my page is going right now i was trying to get on linkedin i'm still making uh efforts to go live there the announcement went to linkedin brand but we're not live right now but of course inside of the ecamm community everybody that's there this is for you guys. And of course, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Yeah, and I'm just really bummed about that because I'm using Restream to go to my LinkedIn and it did the event, but it's not going to the event. So um, mm. I have some issues with Restream when we go to like three or f- I do three or four different places. It's for some reason, if I just pick LinkedIn, it'll go to LinkedIn. Gotcha. But for some reason, it doesn't, it's not gelling just right. So. People at LinkedIn and uh, Restream get get together, talk we about have it, to have a yourselves. conversation, right? <laughs> they yep, need to have, they a brand need to have a conversation. conversation. Uh, um, let's see, Mr. Iowa. Oh, he's talking about there some maple bacon long bars. Um, one of the things that I want to realize, let everybody know, is that um, you have to, if you, for me as a, a professional market advertiser, most of this stuff that I learn, I learned from subscribing to things like Adweek or Marketers World or any of those kind of publications. And they've been talking about micro influencers for the past three or four years, especially when people like Ninja, you know, Blevins hit the, or Mr. Beast, you know, like not everybody can afford $16 million to have that influencer. So they're, they are looking for their, uh, a smaller, uh, bang for their buck. You know, they want to get a cheaper creator. So that still has value. And then also don't, Forget about your local, um, I tell this to Strick all the time, Birmingham, right? Strick City Live, it's all a Birmingham show. So um, not only just locally, don't don't try to think about all these super big brands. Look locally, see how you can uh, make content for people around you that have mm-hmm. a budget to spend. That could be tourism, that could be city government, that could be a uh, local tech company if you're a tech person local camera store right maybe they'll give you some cameras to review for content i mean um i mean i just think you should not just try to go for panasonic and sony you might just be going for the camera store down the street and they might be more uh, you know have more money more readily available to spend on you 
So I want to double uh, down on this, Monty. You said earlier, bring value. Other people have described it as uh, solve a problem or answer a question. Um, as people are looking for something, and, and of course, this is, you know, my, my church world is going to come out. If you're looking to get something, like what are you actually looking to give? Like the mindset of how can I give to the community? How can I give to people? And then hopefully uh, someone would see you're giving to a community that you've built and would want to get inside of that community and actually give you a deal. Is, am I right in saying that? Yeah, I mean, let me see if I'm answering this right. Like, I give people what they want. I learned to give people what they want, not what they need. Gotcha. And I try to give people what they needed, they wouldn't respond to it. Because, for example, like we're having this conversation about how to get brand deals and sponsorships, right? It, what you want is the brand deal and sponsorship and so i'm going to talk to you about how to get it i, I give you all the cool stuff like if you do this you'll get a brand deal and sponsorship what you really need to do is focus on getting behind the camera and hitting the record button oh man like how great. can i hit this record button and actually and actually do a video that people want to watch that that's the brand deal it's if if Come come back on the three screens. I got to see y'all when I say come this real yes, quick. Yes, sir. Come on. Here we go. I did a, vi I did a <laughs> video, my first brand deal video, and I did. I had this $40 lapel microphone. And the reason I did the video, and I initially did it in July-ish of 2019. I did it on Facebook. And the reason I did this video is because I got tired of people putting up their cell phones at these events, and I couldn't hear them when they did their audio. Like, your camera's way in the back of your conference room. I can't hear you. I can see the screen and it looks fuzzy. I can't hear anything you're saying. So as I started to do some of these Lunch and Learn conferences, I had this $40 lapel microphone and I w wanted to show people what it would look like if you plugged in your own $40 lapel microphone in your laptop and then you lapeled up and you went to the front of the room, how simple this is. That was the context of the video. Got you. The company in 2020 found me, that same company. I reached out and I was like, oh, never heard of this company before. Not thinking it's the brand of the <laughs> microphone that I had bought. And so I, I created the video to show people, okay, you, this is what you should be doing. Like, I know you want people to sign up for your MLM because you're like showing me every Saturday morning, but we can't hear you. If you at least mic yourself up, right. they would more likely be able to hear your presentation. So I, the video was, okay, I'm going to give you what you want. You want people to sign up. What you really need, though, is to watch this video. And nobody watched the video straight. <laughs> gotcha. Brent, nobody watched the video. Like, I got no views on the video. But the brand saw value in the video because I was explaining the reason to use the microphone. And what I began to realize is, like, okay, people want what they want. The right. brands are more willing to pay attention to the content of what's needed. And so as someone that's educating people, it's easier for me to say, OK, you should be doing this regardless. And that's what like mastermind communities are really for. Anybody that's not part of a mastermind community, I think y'all should get in one uh, regardless of what it is. I think they're just so impactful because you focus a lot on the needs, what we need to do to get to the next step. Like we're not just on here going live just to be going live. Like there is a goal behind it. Do exactly. we want to go live? I don't know. I don't know. Like last Sunday, I don't know if you really want to go live. Right. But like, right, right. you know, you need to go, need live, to go live, right? And so that's how Sunday you Sunday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. I mean, I'm getting into a good nap. Super Bowl right or not. There. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what it is. It's, 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 a, it's a want versus a need thing. And I right. think the more we put out content to, geared toward giving people what they want, it's a lot easier to grow that audience. But like, Anybody that follows me, I like, I'm big on context and I'll say it all the time. Like you might hear one thing, but the context, get a little bit closer. So I give you the context of what this means so that it actually makes an impact on what you're trying to do. Because everybody watching can go get a brand deal sponsor, but it's the people that understand, okay, how do I actually do what it takes to get it? And am I willing to do that? And it's not difficult to do. It's, but a lot of people just won't do it. And that's what I've learned over the last 18 months or so, you know, working with different companies. Are you saying just do it? Just like Nike, just so, do so, it. Somebody gave me a testimonial and they literally put that on there. Monty is that guy, he, he makes you uh, like Nike, just do it. 
And I'm, I'm big on that execution piece. So can I, I ask you, one of the questions I'd like to ask is I'm a, you know, I've been a long time graphic designer and marketer myself. So maybe I overthink it too much. So how, how much effort do you put into that presentation or that pitch? Is it a graphical thing? Is it an email? Is it a, you know, is, it, yeah. is, that, is that a zero? All right. That's a zero. <laughs> I, I don't, I, because it's me. It, and when I, when I learned to just be me on camera, natively I don't like being on camera like I could care less about being on live stream like I don't really need people all up in my life and nothing like that so I, I don't want to be on camera but when I figure out how to tap into the people that needed me I get on camera to talk to the people that need my help that that's it like I'm not really thinking about nobody else or I don't Hey, you should do it this way. You should do it. Okay, the people that need me are the non-techies of the world that are just trying to figure it out because they're just struggling. They don't understand all the techie talk. So Monty's going to show up and talk in a language that they understand. So when I do that, it allows me to show up because my struggle would be if I, if I knew I had to make it perfect, if I knew my graphics had to be a certain thing, like I feel left out tonight. I don't have the lights going on like y'all. But if I if I got caught up in my head like that's a requirement, right, then I would not do it at all. But if I just show up, OK, I'm going to talk to this group of people that I know they need me and they're willing to listen to me. They don't care about anything else. They just want to know, do you have the answer? Can you help me today? And because I do that, that's how all my content is. Now, there are areas I want to perfect and make better, but every time I do that, I don't create the content. I am sitting on some gear right now yeah. that I'm trying to make the perfect YouTube video. Guess where that video is? It's still sitting on <laughs> SD cards two weeks right. ago versus another video I could have created that I just knocked out real quick because I was so in the zone of talking to that audience. And on this particular video, I'm sitting here thinking, how can I make this a perfect video? And so I don't overthink it. Um, I really try to, can I get this deliverable out? And it makes sense to the people that are listening to me. And I think Strick and I have said this a hundred times on this show. That's why we go live, right? Because mm -hmm. you just, yep. you just do it or go live, yep. figure it out along the way, you know, jump out the plane, figure out the parachute on the way down. Because if you do, especially if you are, a, you know, trained, especially if you, the more trained you are, like for myself or your editor, your graphic designer, you just beat yourself up for days on days trying to make it perfect and let's reshoot it. Like if I try to do a recorded video, I'll reshoot it 10 times. But if I just go live, we're, we're, we're good. <laughs> so, right. you know, that's right. when Guess live what? can help you. I, I did a YouTube video wrong. So that same company that I talked about the microphone, they sent me a microphone, which was my very first brand deal. And they said, hey, would you like to do this microphone in, in exchange for a YouTube video? Awesome. Sure, I'll do it. It's my first brand deal. Somebody reached out to me. I do. And I'm the tech guy, too. Right. Context. I get the microphone. I'm doing the video. I'm all happy. I upload the video and everything. And I read the comment. Your microphone was backwards. What? The microphone was backwards. And then. The company, they sent me an email, a follow-up. Hey, thanks for doing the video. Just wanted to let you know that you did have the microphone turned around and backwards uh, for future reference. And I'm just like, first brand deal. I'm the techie. I did it. I did it wrong. <laughs> yeah. But not even four months later that year, they reached back out to me again with a paid sponsor offer and more equipment. Wow. And I did the video wow. wrong. And when y'all, when I when I did the video wrong for a brand relationship and they still wanted to continue and do more and they wanted to pay me because they didn't pay me the first. Now you want to pay me and you saw that I did the first one wrong. Like I was like, yeah, I said, we got to tap into there is something here. Right. So what I can tell you is that. Where the problem lies is there's just so much content nowadays. You've got to be as you, if you're a marketing director or you're a team, you know, your your CEO is coming in. It's like, oh, I just watched this on YouTube or CNN said we need to be content. Give me content. And you don't have the staff and not everybody. And I and I I just got hired as a content creator for a public library. It's hard to get people to go on camera. They don't mm -hmm. want to. They don't know how to. Or you take six hours for people to go, 
uh, uh, hello this is <laughs> and right. and we us guys that are content creators are like step in front of the mic like hey we're here and you could i could ask monty or strict to do hey baby diapers let's do a spot right now they could pull it they could do it so that's where the real value is and so there's so many marketing people out there dying for this stuff and one thing i realized when we had a brand deal we were kind of waffling on a brand deal and i reached out to that person i said what at the end of the day what do you need yeah. and they said i need i need videos that do xyz and i said and what's the value of that video they gave us a value and we came to terms because it came down to what they just they just needed they didn't deliverables <laughs> like they, yeah. I, I just need some content you know and so always don't be afraid to ask ask what what do you want i mean i can right. i think as content creators we can do whatever right you could read a script you could not read a script but they want it to be authentic that's why they're talking to you so mm -hmm. you know be you but also let's ask him hey what do i need to do what do you want to push what's the brand what you know who's your audience what, what do you feel you know so i think um if you can really get in the minutia of what they of the client wants and what the audience wants you can marry those two then you'll have great success yeah. so that's really one of the questions that walter strong had he was uh, his question was what would you define as good quality content that viewers really want to see when you're going live and i think we answered that early is providing uh value to them right monty yeah when, when you're so i'll take the last part of that because when he said going live so when you're going live i think that interaction is key is crucial right. i know some people go live and they never learn how to interact with their audience and you know, even though we got a lot of tech stuff to make it look all nice and pretty, if we never looked at the comment section to see what you guys were asking or what you guys, you know, what the feedback is, you know, are we doing good? Let us know in the comments. Are we not doing good? Let us know in the comments. Like we need that as people that go live so that we can continue to make better content for you all because you all are the people that are watching. I remember going live a couple times and I was, especially on Facebook, like my Facebook audience, the, Oh, I, I pray for them. When I go live over there, I don't get the responses I do on other platforms. Gotcha. But what I would do is I cater to whoever is live. So if you're the only person watching me live on the platform, I'm talking directly to you. Like, right. what is your question? What do you need help with? And that's how I think about, you know, that interaction piece that I learned a whole lot doing that. So it's a lot easier to know what the audience wants and get that feedback. And if it's something that I can uh, use and implement into what it is that I'm doing to make better content then I will. But, you know, we never know if we don't ask our audience, you know, for that feedback. That's right. That's really good. So we have another question for you. This one is a lot of questions. Detail. Yeah. We're <laughs> going to try to go down as fast as we can. Monty's like, come on, bring them all. So credit day. Shouts out to you, sir. I have a personal finance channel and I review credit cards as rewards, benefits to help average consumers. Any advice on starting out selling your own products or consultation services? Uh, yeah, I mean, everybody should have a digital product. If you're putting out content, I think everybody should have some type of digital product, uh, some type of course or, uh, you know, training, downloadable, something like that. Um, and then, you know, on YouTube, I, I literally put my consultation link in every video. I had random people reach out to me that scroll down. I have never met the people before and they click and they schedule and there's, there's a meeting invite. So I definitely think um, have a, having a platform that allows you to do it like a YouTube platform allows you to easily uh, get the viewership and people do look in the description section. So um, definitely uh, put that information in there. But yeah, definitely have a digital product. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, man, Melvin M. Miller. All right. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Sometimes having all the toys gets in the way of creativity. I say that all the time. Like I'm on this kick with just producing uh, content and reels with your phone and keeping it moving. Mm -hmm. Too many choices can get in the way. And then we have, what's that, um, Brian Jones. He said, uh, I've recorded content that shows features and shortcomings of the product. Okay. How often do you tactfully mention potential issues with the product? So what I do is I don't call them issues, but I call them use cases. So I had one particular company that wanted to reach out and send me a product and it was a paid compensation. So I received a product. And as I was doing the review, I realized that this product wasn't the best fit for my audience. 
So I was trying to figure out how can I keep this relationship with the brand, but not, but also let my audience know this is maybe not the best fit for them. And so what I had to do was really tell them why the device would be good for particular cases and why it may not be good for other cases. So I call them use cases in the tech industry. That's how um, I'm able to navigate that. But if I even think that it's not a good fit for my audience, I won't even take it. That particular product, it was a live streaming piece of product. So that's, I talk about live streaming and video and tech stuff. So it initially looked good to me. Um, but as I was working through it, I just knew it wasn't the best use case. So I made sure to clearly let my audience know. I think it's also really good. Um, years ago, I had a craft beer channel and I, I started at the very beginning to say I wasn't going to rate things like stars because I didn't want to get on the hook with a brand. <laughs> so, but I would just tell people, this isn't the right beer for me, but if you like this style of beer, it's great because I, I kind of educationally know what it's supposed to be so it's like what monty said is like hey this microphone is great if you're a sportscaster and a singer but if you're a live streamer like i am it really probably isn't for me but you should make that choice yourself you know so you can you know kind of ethically uh walk that balance beam and give people the right information and that's why you're an influencer is if you're being authentic right. they want to know what right. monty weaver thinks about this product yeah, and in agreement with the brands and sponsors too. In some cases, you know, you don't have to tell them before you release the video. Um, so just also make sure if you're doing any contracts uh, with them to uh, read the fine print and, you know, what that looks like to them. And if you have to shill for a company you don't believe in, make them pay more. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right, next question from Chris Stone. How do you balance uh, the brand product and your particular brand? What are the factors to determine with a brand that you work for when you are ready to walk? Yeah, uh, I only I I only stick to my tech stuff. Um, Amazon platform is unique where you can do a lot of different things. So there are ways that I'm navigating through that be, by being faceless on that. But my overall brand of Monty Weaver, I want people to know like they can come to me for tech related, you know, questions or things they're looking for. So I really just stay in my lane for those types of products and I have a good good feel of what's good and what's not as good. So, you know, being able to create content for them, I'll let brands know that their product may or may not even be featured on my social platforms because as you start to get attention and as uh, you in your videos, you say, hey, this video is sponsored by, it, it kind of attracts other companies because they know that you're an influencer of some type. So companies that do reach out that are even in the same space, I will let them know, hey, I, I like your product. I think it may be a good fit, but I can't promise you that I'm going to even talk about it on any of my social platforms. Now, if you're willing to compensate for it, then we can talk about that. But if it's one of those borderline ones, they can send it. Then if I like it, then I'll talk about it. Um, one product in particular was like a charging case. I was really like up in the air. I had never seen it, had never heard anybody talk about it before. I actually used it for a live stream conference that I did and it like charged up my my wireless devices like really good. And I was like, oh, this is actually a pretty good device. So I actually did a video based off of that. Um, so that's kind of how I navigate that. So I hope that helps you out, Chris. Good answer there. Another question for you, and this is coming from Danny. Can someone actually do this as a full-time job? I think this is a great question. Uh, or yeah. should people who want to do this just expect to do it as fun or a paid hobby? Great question, Danny. Nah, I'm not doing this for fun. Nah, I ain't doing this for fun. <laughs> right. I don't like showing up in front of the camera just for fun. I, I, I will do something else just for fun. That ain't me. If when, when I started to do brand deals, I'll tell you this. I, I was able to do brand deals with companies that help facilitate my business. So as I'm teaching non-techies, like I need pieces of gear and equipment to teach them. Otherwise, I have to buy them myself. So if a brand is willing to send me something that I don't have to purchase, that is worth it to me starting off. And then eventually I started getting into the paid collaborations. So like right over my shoulder is a PTZ camera. 
Well, during the world being shut down, I was installing equipment at churches and I was always using PTZ cameras. So I started to show PTZ cameras. Companies began to give me PTZ cameras. Now it just made sense for me to say, yeah, I'll show your product in the next video. And it also allowed me to do live streaming events where I didn't have to go pay for a 12, in that case, $1,800 camera for an event. And I can actually level up my production to for my main business. That's good. So that's what I really consider when I do all the deals is how can I use the equipment in my main business? And especially, you know, if they if it's a deal that's worth really considering and, and maybe we're haggling a little bit on the, the price part of it. Well, if you're sending me something of value for my main business, it just makes sense for me to to really consider doing that. I like that. I just want to I want to add one quick thing to that because I think this is a very important question. Um, everybody has a different monetary, you know, um, need, right? So you have kids like myself getting ready to go to college. My needs are a little different, um, you know. So what I always try to tell everybody is don't quit your day job because you probably need insurance, <laughs> taxes. Yep. There's all these other things that that having a job makes. So having it um, to change it, not only having a paid um, hobby, but having a side hustle that you're going to have a plan like in two, three or four years to make it full time. But I would not suggest anybody quit <laughs> and, you know, just say, I'm going to be a creator full time without having yeah. some real monetary value in building about three or four, you know, maybe six months in the bank before you can quit your job because there's a lot of things in that and then you know taxes and all this there's a lot of stuff to be in a business owner or you know than just a, a couple of brand deals so really really think about that and figure out how you can kind of manage both so you don't just put you and your family in a really hard spot and i want to also add to that as a content creator there's several ways to be a content creator to be monetized uh, from TikTok to LinkedIn, to Facebook, to YouTube, to Instagram, everybody is having their own way of monetizing their platforms for you as a creator. Uh, don't, we tell people to focus on one and build a community, but there's sometimes there are some ways to kind of test where you could have better success. Uh, I, I want to say, I mean, I just started doing TikTok literally this week, just started doing TikTok, um, getting more views there than anywhere else. Uh, started doing Facebook reels. Guess what? Facebook just started doing reels. They're pushing those things up to the forefront. There's so many ways to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this because, Monty, if it's me, like most people see the videos want to be a content creator, but don't understand that it is a job. Like it is another oh. job. Like if you're going to be a content <laughs> creator, don't think that it's not a 40 hour a week job. If you're going to be consistent and good at it. Am I wrong in saying that? When I got started on YouTube, it was I, it, I, like most people that want to get started on YouTube. I want to grow a channel, right? Well, when the channel started actually growing, I was like, Oh my gosh, I need to outsource this video editing to even try to, create a video once a week. I'm like, I got other stuff to do. Like Brian said, like, I got a family now. Like, I got other right. stuff to do than sit here and upload a YouTube <laughs> video for y'all right now. So, and then I got to come back and answer the questions because now there's a whole bunch right. of questions right. in the video. So I got to, you know, keep that 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 audience uh, coming back for the next videos. Otherwise, you know, I look bad if I don't respond. And then I got to, you know, talk about, I got to move stuff around in the studio so I can like record a decent video so that you'll actually watch it. Uh, I got to look at my competitors like, okay, they got two cameras going on. Maybe now I need to bring in two cameras and then, oh, now y'all have a whole bunch of questions. Now I need to create a course. Right. Okay. Now where can I get all these people to like be in one place? So I don't have to keep answering the same question over and over and over, but y'all want to interact with me. Okay. Now I need a community right. So, like what started as uploading a YouTube video became like a full <laughs> on business and, and you forgot like, about okay. clubhouse getting on clubhouse <laughs> and yeah then you got to advertise now i gotta get right. more people to come over here to look right. at this right. and yeah it it becomes a full-on business and then you're thinking okay you know i'm looking for vas like i'm literally I had two three wrecks out right now just for like vas just to help like because i do my my show on mondays right so like i'm trying to i need somebody to help me send out the email make sure the person's gonna show up and like give them the link and all this so 
because I have to focus on creating content because my brand is what the brands want. They want Monty. And if Monty's not creating content, Monty's not getting paid right. for it. So, <laughs> um, well, yeah, no, and I, 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 I will say up for college too. Right. <laughs> right. As, as I said, as I said before, um, I have five kids, Monty. So, you know, just if you need any advice, it just, <laughs> it, it just keeps coming and keeps coming. But, um, the, the biggest thing that I also want to tell people, even though I am very, um, like say, Hey, take your time. You need extra money. You can make more money doing investing yourself doing this than going to you know do a second job at night at mcdonald's right making 15 bucks an hour so uh, you know weigh the consequences like for me i know my you know everybody goes to sleep at eight nine o'clock so nine to midnight i can do this out here in the uh, spare i'm in my own shed i know everybody else some has a spare bedroom or whatever so, you know, there's value in that. Plus, you have the tax write-offs for all this equipment that we buy. So, you know, um, invest in yourself. And that's one thing that I, I really think that you're doing a really great job at, Monty, is, is you're taking, you know, you, you're committed to you and, and knowing that you can make it happen. And I want everybody to know that you can do that for yourself. It, but it is work. It doesn't just yeah. go viral overnight. Maybe you oh, will. Yeah. Maybe there are some people that will. We haven't. We've been going at this for two years, and we haven't yet. But yeah, if they go viral, they need to come let us know how they did it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. So, you know, in my experience, and just in a week um, with some of these other platforms, I believe they kind of do a little teasing. You know, your first yes. couple of videos, mm -hmm. they can have a whole bunch of views, and you start loading and loading up, thinking I'm going to get the same type of experience. And uh, the algorithm catches up with you you know mm. what do you do different i didn't do anything different it just went from three thousand to 200 mm -hmm. i you right. know but you have to do the testing i think you have to get out there and i think for people that want to do this full time find ways to always to be making yourself better from a skill standpoint Mm -hmm. All right. Sometimes like I like being in a studio, I turn these lights on, whether it's my phone or my professional camera, I can look good, talk about anything. I absolutely love doing shorts. YouTube is YouTube is big on shorts. I, the 15 second reels, all those things are great. It's short content. I mean, but it's mm -hmm. keeping me uh, It's actually allowing me to learn a new technology. Like I'm, a, I'm able to edit inside of a platform. And I don't have to go inside a Premiere Pro. Like, this is cool. <laughs> you well, know, I tell everybody. Like that. Well, I can tell everybody, and I always try to remind myself, because I get, uh, you know, I, I text Strick every day. Like, we share numbers. Like, I did this this video. It's got this many hits. I get really obsessed with analytics. I'm sure Monty does, too. Tech people, right? Mm -hmm. We just get involved with those. But what I did realize is that, I got the job that I have now as a content creator for a public library. I switched careers. I actually switched jobs because of the stream show. I was able to do my Zoom interview on this set. I was able to point to the video. And they don't know. I mean, that it's right. how many followers or anything. I was like, man, that just looks professional. But right. the first day on the job, I was able to do something with our executive director with Ecamm and make him look like a rock star the very first day on the job, right? So know that every show and every show I've ever made on YouTube has led to something else. It might not be the, the big payoff or the big viral video or the brand deal, but it might be that next job down the road. So I think it's just investing yourself and just working through these issues of finding your voice, learn how to use the technology, um, setting up lights, setting up videos, because you might get hired to do this thing at a church and have to do three cameras and know that and nobody knows how to do it but you're going to be like oh i know monty he's he uses oh. you know and strick and all those guys they use the uh, cam link i'm gonna get the cam link right so you're just gonna learn all these things it's just another uh skill set to put in your toolbox yeah i got a couple of questions that we're going to end up with today living water quilter says monty if if any what are the do's and don'ts and must have influencers should consider with brand deals? Kind of like the do's and don'ts. Uh, that's, a, that's a long list on both sides. Um, <laughs> a, a lot of it does depend on you personally. And one of the things we talked about, like everybody's needs are different, right? So for, 
some of the do's make sure that whoever you're working with like you actually like their product or your their service like don't just accept everything um, especially if it doesn't align um, your audience is going to be very important that you keep them uh, at the at the forefront of anything you do with the brand deal um, look out for words like exclusivity that's one of the words I kind of look at on the contract and I'll scratch that out um, especially if the rate is not where I feel it needs to be because I do like to work with a lot of similar type of brands and, and most people in different in industries I'm sure you have competitor products and services where if that other competitor reached out to you you definitely want to entertain it so I do pay attention to the language in the contracts to make sure that it aligns and doesn't like pigeonhole me in um, ask for more than what you think you're worth uh, I did that one time, just shot a number out three times higher than what <laughs> I thought. And they actually came back and they were like, no, not quite. We'll go back to your uh, 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 other offer. So it, like I actually got higher than what I originally was going to pitch because my offer was super low and I just three times higher and they wanted the deal. So, um, yeah, pricing yourself is always one of those those good things to, to figure out along the way. And you will as you do more and more. And when you try to. When you, when you actually look at the list of what you're providing, then you really do it. And that's one of the things I was doing in my community is like I'm, I'm, I'm listing out all the things that we do as influencers, like by line items. So you really see what you're providing as a service, because I think of myself as a service based industry. And one of the things that Gary B talked about a couple years ago is to think of yourself as a media company. So being a service provider and a media company and knowing the rates there because you know I do this outside of creating content I actually go and, and, and provide a service of media to companies I know what that number looks like for an hour-long event for eight hours of creating content essentially so hopefully that helps out a little bit but yeah it, it's gonna depend on everybody's different you know situations for you know what you might accept and might, what you might not accept uh, but at the end of the day i think pay attention to which it, the value to your audience is going to be the most important especially if you're doing it on your platform if you're doing it on the platform of the company then you know make sure that you're that you align with that company all good stuff monty man let me say this you are providing such great value uh, Kevin Cox, I know you just joined in with this team replay. You're going to want to listen to all of this because there was so much knowledge shared tonight. And we have a few more people that chimed in. Michelle is here with us tonight. Uh, Chris Stone says detail matters. Uh, you never know who's watching. Uh, James Hicks is chimed in uh, with us as well. Um, am I missing anybody? DJ Wright. On Kirk Nugent's in, the, in there. Yeah, yeah. So, so we've had a lot of people chime in tonight, Monty. One of the things that I know that is important for you, as you are building community and also having programs that people can be a part of, if they're hearing you tonight and want to connect with you, what is the best way they can do that? Uh, YouTube. If you follow me on YouTube, actually watch the videos. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, don't go over there and not watch the videos. But that's where I hang out a lot. Um, I do have the new community is called blueprint blueprint influencers. So that's where I just focus on these brand deals and sponsorships that that is the sole focus of that group. And then I have another community that's called the family. Essentially, that's the unofficial name of it. Uh, that's like my mastermind community. So that's not open or anything, but that's like where I kind of really dig into like more so the thought processes of why we're doing what we do. And again, hitting on that execution part of it is getting rid of these stumbling blocks that um, we allow to get in our way and overthinking why we can't hit the record button and, you know, platforms, which platform is better for this and that. And like, just pick one and just go with it. Like, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Um, so those are three places, YouTube, Blueprint Influencers. And then um, I'll let you guys know later on my YouTube channel about mastermind stuff because that's really where we kind of get down and in, into the weeds of everything i love it i love it well thank you so very much for your time sir like this has been awesome uh james hicks has said this has got to be like one of the best stream shows uh 
very informative and he thanks you for hanging out with us and just like cool. we do we really do it took us a while to get here but I, i'm i'm yeah. thankful that you it. would say hey man i, I want to be over there with you guys too so hopefully um you know someone would connect with you through this because as content creators i mean when you go on you go on somebody's show you want something to get, come out of it like you don't may not get yeah. something but if it's just one person that connects with you uh, from my audience, man, I, I pray that it's worth it. And definitely big shouts out to Dr. Elo for checking in with us yes, tonight as well. Yes. Yeah, like I always say, it's add to your digital resume. So, you know, you take these videos, I put them on my channel. Be like, hey, do you speak? Have you done a live stream? Yeah, like here's the library. So at the worst case scenario, like you help me get the next deal because it's, it's awesome. social proof that I know how to show up and talk on through a camera lens like right i don't think people understand like how important it is that, like showing up it really is and when you just show up you know these people that are going to watch it they may not ever look at the brand they might never look at the numbers how many people were watching that live stream versus like right. oh that was very entertaining of a live stream we need to call all three of those guys back for this uh, opportunity <laughs> that's we true. Have here. right yeah, you just true. never know you just never know you yeah, want to definitely know. bring your best but uh, you never know. That's Michelle said that inside of the yep. uh, chat tonight. Like you never know who's watching, who would get this. I mean, we're in the eCamp community. Like we just yeah. had uh, the co-founder of eCamp. Listen to what I'm saying. The co-founder of eCamp was on this show. Um, so people are watching. Not only are the people in the community watching, but even some of uh, <laughs> they don't think that some competitors are not chiming in as oh, well. Yeah. They're watching. Everybody <laughs> wants to be aware of what's happening. So we appreciate that. And we have a list of other guests coming through to provide the community value, similar to what you were meaning uh, or saying earlier about if you give value to people, they'll show up and then build community from there. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Hold what you got, Monty. Uh, just for a second, let's wrap up. Um, Grant, what a great show, right? Has Monty not been a great guest for us? He has been a great guest. I think um, one of the things I'm very um, um, excited about when I listen to him speak is it's just no nonsense and it's not fluff. You know, it's not like you could be multi million dollar deals by joining my course. You know, it's right. just very, very, and, and we've had this conversation. You know, one of the things that was Strick and I talk about all the time, let's do a course. No, do a course. Let's do this. Let's not do that. You know, and I'm the one that pushes back because I don't want to be that Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, just stream till your eyeballs bleed and just, you know, and Monty's very um, thoughtful and very um, honest and just kind of, here's how you do it. And right. I think that's one of the things that we've always tried to do with this show is just to say, it's a lot of work. It's no, you're not, not going to be famous overnight, but you can get paid because we started this show being monetized, right? Exactly. Day one. With no viewers, no channel, right. no nothing, just a, just a conversation because we had something, right? And um, some other people saw that value. And I really want people to understand that they can see the value in themselves, that you are important. Um, you What you say is important. And just because somebody else is saying it, uh, over and over again, you might be saying it a different way, or you just might hit somebody a different way. So, right. um, you know, you're important. So don't, don't let the numbers and the, um, likes and the follows and all that stuff get you down because just keep, keep grinding out the content and, um, uh, believe in yourself. Hey Brent, we don't have a widget on the screen that would tell us that we got a new subscriber, but we did have a new subscriber tonight. Did we? Jarhead, thank you for subscribing if you haven't nice. already. Uh, Kevin is actually to hit the like button. Definitely hit the <laughs> like button and um, continue to support what we're doing here at the stream show next Sunday, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Kevin Colby. Derek Floyd, Nicole Sellers, all on the show at one time. The panel is back, and we're going to continue to talk to streamers, helping you be better and be successful at your content. That's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Don't miss it next Sunday. All right, guys. Well, let's wrap up right here. Thank you for everybody that uh, has been in the comments. Um, man, we love building community and being here for you. See you next Sunday. We 